29 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour in eco mode. You guys want to see something crazy? Let's start the review. Velotrek has come out with their updated version of the Discover e-bike. This is the Discover 2. There are tons of things to go over with this bike, so let's get into it. The Velotrek Discover 2 is a class one, class two, or class three e-bike. It's totally up to you. This bike can go as slow as 12 miles an hour and go as fast as 28 miles an hour. You can achieve those speeds through the various settings that you can do through the bike, this new type throttle that's on your left hand side and your torque sensor. This bike has three modes and it has five levels of pedal assist giving you a total of 15 different pedal assist levels. The Discover 2 weighs 63 pounds but has a maximum payload capacity of 440 pounds. Currently the Discover 2 retails for $16.99. Save an additional $60 by using my discount code SCOTT60 at checkout. The Discover 2 only comes in a step through model and this step over height is only 15 inches tall. It comes in two sizes. You get a regular, which is good for riders that are 4'11 to 5'9, and a large, which is good for riders that are 5'6 to 6'4. The Discover 2 comes in four colors, pine green, stone gray, mint, and this cherry crimson that I have here. Bellatrex says that the Discover 2 will go up to 75 miles on a single battery charge. Now we all understand that that would be in the eco mode at your lowest pedal assist level with like a super light rider, but I weigh 220 pounds. We're gonna throw some equipment here on the back. I'm gonna be fighting the Chicago wind and we're gonna see how far it goes today. The motor is a 48 volt, 750 watt brushless rear hub motor. It has a peak power of 1100 watts and 75 Newton meters of torque. You have an eight speed transmission with a Shimano Altus derailleur and your Shimano eight speed trigger shifter. For stopping power, you have the Tektro two piston hydraulic brake system, along with 180 millimeter rotors. The front fork is hydraulic. It's made by D5. It has 80 millimeters of travel. You have preload settings and you can lock it out. The tires are 27.5 by 2.4 inches. They are Kenda. They have a nice street pattern to them and they're puncture resistant. The front wheel is equipped with a through axle. This way it makes it super easy to attach your front wheel to your bike. So let's talk about the battery. Well, this is a 48 volt, 14.7 amp hour battery with 705.6 watt hours of power. Now this battery can be power washed. It can be thrown in the water, just thrown into the bike and it should be good to go. Now, to be honest, I haven't done this yet, so let's see if it's gonna power up. Oh, I am so glad this bike started because this review would have ended right now. The bike and the battery has two UL certifications. I'm gonna put them right there so you can see them. So the battery has one, the bike has one, and clearly it is IPX rated so that it can handle that kind of stuff. It is going to come with a three amp charger, which means you'll be able to charge your battery up in about five hours. Now you can leave it in the bike the way it is, there is a charging port right here and it is very secure. Or you can use your key, comes with two keys, unlock it, pop the battery out, and then throw it in the tub or charge it. Additional features include metal fenders, plastic pedals. You have this rear rack that comes mounted to the bike. It holds up to 66 pounds and it has a MIC HD system on it so that you can easily take your bags on and off. You have an adjustable seat post clamp. The Velotrek seats are always great, so I'm super happy with that. And you have this adjustable stem. Let's talk about size and fit. Well, the seat has lines here on the back that'll show you the highest and lowest, which is really nice because in that way, you can remember your number if you're sharing your bike with others. And right there is the highest setting. Go ahead and put it on its lowest setting. Well, let's just move it all the way down to its lowest, which is about right there. I do enjoy the fact that it comes with its own adjustable stem from the factory, allowing you to move this up and down and get it to the right position for maximum comfort. For storage options, you can purchase this front basket, a rear basket. I'm just holding that up there so you can see what that would look like if you had it on there. And for safety, you can purchase the Velotrek handlebar mirror. Cockpit operations. Okay, guys, this is where things get crazy. Let me show you. 
on your left hand side you have a single locking grip i always love the velotrek grips because it just seems to be the right consistency of rubber it does have a palm rest here is your front brake lever and here is your control settings right here is your throttle which is different than the other ones because you push it forward instead of down to turn the bike on you're just going to hit this button right here I went ahead and took my glove off real quick so you guys can see better. This is the screen. It is a 3.5 inch screen. It's a big screen. The great part is it is very clear and we're gonna find out and see how clear it is in direct sunlight. But this has a battery indicator right here. It also tells you your percentage. Uh, there's a series of things up here that we'll talk about here in a minute. This shows you which mode that you're in and there's a button underneath here that you can just easily press to switch it from eco to trail to boost. I'm gonna put it back in eco. This is your speed limit. This will tell you what pedal assist level you're in, and to operate those, you're just going to hit these up and down buttons here on your controller. If you hold the plus button, it'll turn on the headlight. This headlight has about 130 lumens, which makes it much more powerful than the normal headlights that are on e-bikes. Hold it again, it'll turn it off. Right here are your turn signals. So yes, this bike has turn signals. You push it to the left, turns on your left turn signal. If you want to turn it off, you hit the button again, right turn signal. There you go. Hit that button again to turn it off. The odometer shows up right here. Your total time on the bike, if you hit this M button right here, real quick, it'll bounce through your different levels. Trip distance, trip time, average speed, max speed, calories, and CO2 saved. And then it bounces back in there. But here comes the very interesting part. This is where all of the cool stuff happens. Hold this M button down. It's going to take you into the menu. With this menu, you can reset your trip data. This is where you can also switch your riding modes, but it's so much easier just to do it with the button down below. You can just adjust it by hitting the up and down buttons. Uh, we're gonna leave it in eco, then we're just gonna save it. It'll bounce you right back out. Speed limit from here, this is your speed limit, but you can take it all the way down to 12 miles an hour. And that means that the fastest this bike will go would be 12 miles an hour. So we're going to go ahead and put it right back up to 28, and that is the max. And you can stop it anywhere in between. We're going to go ahead and hit the M button, save that. We'll move down here to screen brightness. You can adjust the screen brightness, but I have it set for auto, which means it'll dim and brighten depending on how the uh, outdoor lighting is. Auto power off. Well, that tells you how long you can set it before the bike turns off on its own. Auto light, which you can set it up to where it works basically like the display. The light will turn on when it needs to and turn off when it doesn't. Rear light mode. This is where things get interesting. We're going to hit the M button to select it. Right now, the tail light is steady, and then when you hit the brake, it's going to flash. Or you can move it over to number two, where the tail light is flashing, and then when you hit the brake, it's solid. And that's what that looks like. Number three, the tail light is steady, and then you have this enhanced with flashing on the rear tail light. I think those settings are pretty cool on its own. Let's just set it to that. Come down here to throttle limited. Now, this is awesome. Right here means that you can use this throttle right here and take your bike all the way up to 28 miles an hour. It is not locked to your different pedal assist levels. Or you can turn it on and make it so that your throttle will only go to whatever pedal assist level speed you have set up. I'm moving mine back to off. Cruise control. Yes, this bike has cruise control. We went ahead and turned it on. So we're just going to save that and we'll show you that feature later. This is where you connect it to the app. This bike does have a phone app. It's an enhanced phone app compared to what they had before, so we'll show you that here later in the review. Find My, this bike has Find My, so I have already connected this to my iPhone so that I can find this bike if it ever disappears. Set the unit, this is where you set either miles per hour or kilometers. Come down more version info, and this will tell you what the version of the display and the controller is. From there, there is that little button that I told you before here on the bottom, and we're gonna hit that. Now, the interesting thing about this button is that it does have a couple of functions. As you can see right here, it's an eco mode. You just hit that button real quick, and you can bounce in between the different power levels. Right behind this controller right here is a USB-C charging port. Not the USB-A type. They've updated it to modern standards. It is USB-C, and it is right in behind these buttons. On the right-hand side, your rear brake lever is hidden behind this grip. And this is your eight speed trigger system. You just use this to go down in gear and then you use your index finger to go up in gear. It also comes with a bell. I wanna point out real quick that 
The bike does not come with this folding lock, but I'll leave a link down in the description below. So now it is time for my favorite part, and that's where I take this bike out and we run it through the test to see how well the Discover 2 does. So right now we're going to head to a buddy of mine. We're going to go ahead and try this different test. But right now we have the bike in zero pedal assist mode, so it's not providing any assist to the bike. It is super easy to ride. I'm cruising at 10, 11 miles an hour without having to put very much effort into this ride at all. Also in this review, we'll be testing out all the various settings and different power assist levels. All right, guys, Bellatrex says that the Discover 2 can pull up to 800 pounds using throttle only. I came out here, told Chris about it. He said, bring it out here to my shop here at Insight Sign Company, and we're going to pull it around on this dolly. Now, I have to tell you that when I saw their video of them pulling 800 pounds, that we noticed it was on wheels. And, you know, it is kind of easier to pull things when it's on wheels. We did try putting it on a skid, putting it flat out on the floor. I just had him hop on it. It was 220 pounds and it didn't move, but we had a lot of friction. So what we did is we put 370 pounds on this moving dolly back here. Then Chris weighs 220 pounds. He's going to hop on top of it as well, giving us a total amount of 590 pounds. Let's see how it does. I have it in boost mode. I have the throttle unlocked. We're in pedal assist five and we're doing throttle only. Here we go. As we're heading over to do some additional testing, some thoughts came to mind about the pull test that we just did. Now, I know they say it can do 800 pounds of pulling and pulling the 590 pounds that we pulled was super easy because we have done more. Yes, but we also didn't have the weight uh, to do it. So I was just basically gave you all the weight that I had to show if it could do it. And it did it relatively easy. I mean, it was like no problem at all. But as I'm thinking about that, I don't think that that's like a huge selling point to this bike. I don't see you using this bike and taking it out to the woods and, you know, like deer hunting with it and then, you know, dragging a deer back out of the woods to your truck. I don't see this bike being used for that. But if you were pulling like a kid trailer or something like that, well, then, yeah, you're definitely going to be good to go. I'm not sure how much I'm going to like this mirror here. I'm used to like a bar in mirror. I'm a big fan of those. Since they did send this to me, I wanted to see how nice it is right now. Every time I seem to hit some bumps, it moves a little bit. So I might use it to this for this review, but that might be the only time that I use this mirror. We are out here on the 606 trail here in Chicago. This is where I do most of my reviews when it comes to the testing of the speeds and all of that kind of stuff. They say it's supposed to be 59 degrees today. The winds are extremely strong again today. I don't know if you've seen my past few reviews, but on sunny days, the wind has just been pounding. So I do not expect to get anywhere near the mileage, the optimal mileage that this bike can do. Let's go ahead and hop into the menu here real quick. We're gonna do, we're gonna start off by testing out the throttle and I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. There we go, lock it, boom, hits this button down below, boom, takes us back to the main thing. We have it in eco mode, pedal assist one. We're gonna do throttle only and see how fast it takes us. Now I do have the bike unlocked to 28 miles an hour and it looks like we can do 14, 14.9, 15 miles an hour in pedal assist number one throttle only. Let's try pedal assist number two. 17 miles an hour in pedal assist number two. Let's go for number three. Pedal assist number three, you're gonna cruise at 23 miles an hour. Number four, 26, 25, 26 miles an hour in pedal assist number four. Let's go for number five. That should take us to 28. And there it is, 28 miles an hour. Uh, actually 28.8, 29. Between 28 and 29 miles an hour. Now we have the throttle unlocked. We're still in 28 miles an hour. Let's go, let's see how that feels. Picks up pretty quick. Uh, everything does feel controlled. Let's go, baby. And there we go. Yeah, she'll cruise right along at 28 miles an hour, 29 miles an hour via thr 30 miles an hour via throttle only. Pedal assist number one, eco mode. And let's see what we're gonna comfortably cruise at. Kicked it into gear five, cruising at 15 miles an hour. You know, here's one thing that I like. I can tell with this gearing, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be super nice. You know, most of the time I have to put it in like the top gear and then just go, go, go. But it feels like with this bike, you'll be able to bounce around through the gears and get a different riding experience out of each one of them. Like if I'm pushing it, I hit 20 miles an hour. I'm not gonna hit 28 
in this unless I try real hard. And I don't want to. <laughs> so let's try pedal assist too and see what your cruise speed is gonna be from that. 20 miles an hour, pedal assist too. Let's go for three. So comfortably cruising at 21 miles an hour in eco mode, pedal assist three, but I bet if I cranked it, I just went up into a gear, I'm in gear seven now. Yeah. Okay, all this gearing, so many options. Well, I'm very comfortably cruising at 25 miles an hour in eco mode. Now, if I'm barely putting any effort into it, I'm cruising at 21 miles an hour in pedal assist four. And then in eco mode, pedal assist five, I'm just cruising comfortably, you know, around that 20, 21 mile an hour. Let's go ahead and just kick it into trail mode here real quick at pedal assist number five. Oh, this feels great. And I'm just cruising at 25 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and try boost. Oh, we are scooting. You can very easily maintain 28 miles an hour in boost mode. Super nice. All right, we're gonna slow it down, too many people. Let's try 20 miles an hour if we wanted to be, keep ourselves into class two modes. Pedal assist number one is gonna take you up to nine miles an hour. Let's go ahead and try two. Two will take you to 11 miles an hour. Let's go to three. Three takes you to 13. Let's go to four. Number four will get you to 17 miles an hour. We'll go for five. And there we go. It takes us to 19, like 19.9 .9 miles an hour to keep you in that class two speed limit. We have unlocked the speed limit into class two speeds at 20 miles an hour. We're just using throttle. Let's go ahead and see how that feels. All right, it takes off a little bit stronger. Everything is super controlled though. It's not gonna jolt you back. And it seems to launch relatively quick up to speed. Pedal assist number one, eco mode. You'll comfortably cruise at 11 miles an hour and pedal assist one in eco mode. But if I crank it, see, you'll shoot up to 20 miles an hour. That's what I love about a torque sensor. Well, actually I'm cranking up only to 17. Oh, let's put it in a higher gear. There we go. Yeah, I just needed to put it in a higher gear. Let's go to pedal assist number two. Went ahead and put it back down into gear four. Pedal assist three. Kick it up another gear. I feel that with this bellow power system that they have, that a lot of it is gonna depend on what gear you're in. Let's go ahead and put it into five. See if I notice a difference in this eco mode. Climbing this hill right now in eco. Let me hit it in a trail. Oh, see, now I notice. Let me hit it in boost. There it is. Your eco trail and boost are really gonna come into play whenever you're going up the hill. We're gonna pop in here. We're gonna go ahead and change the speed limit. We go all the way down to 12 miles an hour. For those people who like to go slow, uh, let's go to eco mode, pedal assist number one, throttle only. Let's see how fast we go. All right, you're gonna cruise at six miles an hour. Let's go ahead to pedal assist number two. I don't see any difference. No, well, just the higher end of six. Let's go to pedal assist number three. So far, all right, so we got a couple miles an hour faster. We're at eight miles an hour, pedal assist number three. Let's go to four, and here we are at nine, 10 miles an hour in pedal assist number four. Five should take us all the way up to 12 miles an hour. So it looks like in pedal assist number five, it's just gonna put you at 11 miles an hour, high end of 11 miles an hour. I just put it into eco mode. Uh, it doesn't matter what pedal assist level you're in, it's just gonna be straight throttle. So let's see what that feels like. Oh, it's nice and gentle takeoff. Had a really nice takeoff. Now it's just gonna shoot us up to the 12 miles an hour or the 11.9 or whatever it. It stays on in the eco mode. Pedal assist number one. And let's go. Now this is a torque sensor. So, you know, you, you're gonna have that comfortable rate that you should be able to go, but then I should be able to just crank this thing out to a full 12 miles an hour if I want. And that is what we just did. The gearing on this is excellent. Those three different modes with those basically 15 levels of pedal assist. I, I mean, that makes this bike a definite winner when it comes in the old commuter e-bike for 2024. This thing is gonna be excellent. Let's check out the speedometer versus the display. As you can see, everything matches up and all is good. Let's go ahead and try the cruise control. And here's how it works. So you get to the speed that you want. You use that button that's down at the bottom of the controller right here and you hold it for three seconds. And then the cruise control kicks on. The cruise control lever popped up on the screen and we're just cruising at 17 miles an hour. That is a nice feature and it's super easy to control. I'm sure if I hit a brake lever, it's going to uh, disengage. Yeah, and it did. 
So what I've noticed so far is that because you can do all that adjustments between the handlebars with this adjustable stem and your seat and the different riding modes and controls that this bike is super comfortable. It is geared incredibly well. I am super thrilled with this bike so far. And I have to tell you, I love the color of this bike. In the sunshine, it just sparkles. Let's see if you guys can see the uh, turn signals in this bright sunlight. Right one's going. And then we've got the left one's going right here. You know, this bike maneuvers rather well. You know, having that step through with that low point of clearance. These brakes work excellent as well. I mean, they, you know, a lot of times it goes off of feel. Like, how do they feel? Well, these feel super nice. Let's go ahead and do the off-road part of this review. I mean, of course this bike can do it. I figured it would. It's not making any noise at all which I like, and it is also, I mean, like you can just feel, I say, I say this a lot, I say that bikes feel solid. Some feel more solid than others, and this would be one of those bikes that feel more solid than other ones do. All right, one thing I do notice is that the turn signals do not turn off on their own. Apparently, I've been riding around with my left turn signal on like an idiot. Let's go ahead and turn that off. It is time for the hill test. You know, we're gonna try it out in eco mode first. We do have the throttle unlocked. So let's see if eco mode is gonna get us up this hill. I mean, let's not forget, this does have a 750 watt rear motor. I mean, we're doing it, we're doing it slow, but I already feel like we're gonna be able to make it. Yeah, we're gonna be able to make it. I'm very curious to see how quick we'll be able to get up with trail and boost. But even in eco mode, we made it up the hill. I hit the turn signal again. <laughs> so with gloves, you got to watch out. You'll hit those turn signals pretty easy. Now we're in trail mode, throttle only. Let's go. So this is a 15% grade and higher at certain parts with this hill. And trail doesn't, we're not going up there that much faster, to be honest. It just feels like uh, you just have a little bit more power to make it. But I don't feel like we went up any faster. We have put it into boost mode. All right, let's see if we notice any difference. Let's go. Well, yeah, you could feel it uh, with taking off, although it's not a huge difference in speed, but you do go a little bit quicker, although I don't feel like we are during this part, you know, just on the little bit more flat areas. But when we hit those steeper parts, I still feel like we're going the same speed. As I've mentioned it before, these three different levels are for helping you when you're pedaling. So we're going to try uh, the pedal assist levels on those three different versions. Now we're going to try just pedaling up the hills in these three different modes. I have it in eco. We're in pedal assist number five, so I want to make sure I get the most power. But I did put us down into gear four to make it easier to pedal going up this hill. And let's see how that feels. Right. Oh, we're going to kick it down another gear, actually. There we go. I mean, it doesn't feel bad. You are definitely putting some effort in, uh, in the process of making it up the hill, but it's still doable. Like if you wanted some exercise and you were going up a long hill, that would be the mode to have it in. Same thing, trail mode. Let's see how it does. Oh, okay. I felt it on that. Yeah, now it's like easy. It's super easy climbing up these hills in these modes in trail mode for sure. All right. Oh, boost, we're gonna be flying. I bet I don't put any effort at all, which is definitely what you would wanna keep in mind when climbing hills with this bike. Now we have it in boost. Pedal assist five, still in gear three, let's go. Oh yeah, okay. Now we are moving. We're just moving up this hill now. Ooh, boost is fun for climbing. Look at that. Oh, we just tore up this hill. We just flew. We flew up it. Yeah, she is a little hill climber. You just got to put her in the right mode. I mean, she'll climb in all three modes, but you won't notice any difference on throttle. It doesn't feel like when you put it in those different modes, but you'll definitely notice it whenever you're pedaling. All right, guys, I'm stopping off here for lunch. Let's go ahead and do a mileage check. Uh, we have 58% battery power. The display shows we're at 14.1 mile strava shows that we're at 13.8 so it's not too far off i mean no not really so that's not too bad all right let's see if it's still at 58 percent once i have lunch and come back out 
It has been about 20 minutes of having lunch. Let's go ahead and power this thing on, see where we're at battery management wise. Uh, we left at 58%. We still have 58%. So yeah, we are dead on. Let's head downtown. It has turned into a beautiful day here in Chicago. It has gotten a lot warmer than it was this morning when I started off with the specs. One thing I've noticed about this bike, it coasts very well. So you can stop pedaling and she'll just keep a rolling. And I'm sure it's because of the size of the tires and the, su and the tire pattern. Now, one nice feature that I noticed, since you can change the mode that you're in so easily by hitting that bottom button, whenever you run into a hill, well, it's just super easy to put it into boost. Most of the other time I'm gonna be in eco because it doesn't really matter. Now we are in eco mode and we are flying. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. 29 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour in eco mode. Woo. Oh. Well, I've reviewed some really great bikes recently and doggone it this is another one man i wouldn't expect that from this bike that is impressive uh, this bike screams right but it doesn't feel like it would scream you know it just gives you that it's like a sleeper right like you know you can just ride it it'll look nonchalant it'll look timid until you put the go juice on it you pedal real hard and this thing just launches nice job velatrek you know, I can tell you guys really put some thought effort when it came into going from the Discover 1 to this one. I'll end up doing a review showing you the difference between the two, but there's a lot. There's huge differences between these two bikes. And in those differences, what they did is they took a good bike and made it amazing. Now we are out here at the Lakeshore Trail. This is the trail that is right beside the lake here, Lake Michigan, here in Chicago. Let me go ahead and put this into boost just like that, making it super easy for me to climb up this hill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All the power is so smooth. This bike is gonna be tough to beat when you look at the possible commuter bikes for 2024. Now that we are out here, let's go ahead and do a mileage check. It shows that we have 46% on the battery. We've gone 20.9 miles. Strava says we've also gone 20.9 miles. Let's talk about the app. This is the Velotrick app. You want you download it. I have already connected it to the bike. You have some options. Oh, I should have did the start riding. I totally forgot to do that. As you can see, we have it in boost mode. You know, if I wanted to just change that to eco, we're going to confirm it. And it just moved it down to eco mode. You can adjust the screen brightness. I have it set on auto. Now take a look here at the screen. You see where it shows that I have it on auto. And now it's showing that it's connected to the phone app. You can easily switch your speed limits right here. Do your auto power off and on, auto light, cruise control, throttle limit, all that good stuff. Now, when I first got this bike and fired it up, we did have to do a firmware update. This says that there's no update available because we ended up doing one. So if you get this bike, go ahead, log into this uh, app and then do your firmware update. And then if we go back, we're going to start writing. So we have it at 20.9. We're going to start writing, shows where we're at, shows those kind of things. And then when we take off, We'll see if it tracks us and we'll catch that towards the end. We know that we've basically on 21 miles, so we'll do the backward math on that. But yeah, well, let's keep riding. The sun is shining directly on this display and I can see it really well. So that's a good thing. Um, I do like how whenever you put it in a different pedal assist level, it changes colors and then your power bar matches the colors. As you can see, it's in number five, but then four is red, three is yellow, one is green. To his blue. This is a really great looking display. Since I have this on auto brightness, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the headlight on. And normally that would dim the screen, but since it knows that it's still light out, it's gonna still allow me to see the display perfectly because of that auto setting. That is also a feature that I like because normally whenever somebody turns on your headlight, well, the bike just dims the screen and if you want to use your headlight in the daytime for safety, well, you can't really do that because then you can't see your screen. It is time to test out how this bike rides in the sand. I have it in pedal assist five. I dropped it down to gear three. Let's go ahead and put this into boost mode and let's see how she does. Oh, we started off with throttle and now we're just pet. Oh gosh. Oh boy. <laughs> Ooh, she's squirrely, but we're making it. Oh, Ooh. I have the throttle going. I got boost. I'm trying to kick down some gears. Come on, let's just make it to the other side. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, all right, it is possible, but you are definitely gonna put some work in on that one. I would say that that is not a highlight of this bike. Oh boy, here we go. Cut through, cut through, cut through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's certain companies out there that like give you real world distances on their website when they talk about how far a bike can go. Bellatrex, one of them, I believe they said in Pedal Assist 5, this bike will go 30 miles. Well, not sure it's gonna get that with me considering all the testing that I've been putting it through, but I hope it gets close to that because we're eight miles from home, which you know what, that, that I'm, I'm gonna turn around. <laughs> I'm gonna turn around and start heading back because we still have to do a brake test. I gotta find a place to do a brake test. We are definitely taking some different routes today. I'm gonna give it a shot and see how easy it's gonna be to make it over this bridge. I mean, I do still have it in boost mode. Making those sharp turns, let's go. Let's go. There we go. Uh, see, so if you had to go over something like this, super easy. Now let's just go ahead and take these stairs. <laughs> I'm kidding. No way am I doing that. You know, I reviewed a couple of bikes that I feel like I could sit on and ride all day. This is one of them. With this riding position, everything is just so comfortable. Definitely don't have to change out the seat on this one. All right, let's, we're still in boost. Oh, I forgot to take it out of boost. But we'll go up this hill, no problem, I bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. Had a little bit of effort, but we still made it up, no problem. Let's go ahead and throw it back down into eco mode. I mean, realistically, that's what you need it in most of the time. That's also where you'll get your most mileage out of this bike. I have reviewed many bikes with turn signals on them. And when, uh, when they first came out, I, I totally thought that was a gimmick. But I have to tell you, when I know a bike has turn signals on it, I use them all the time. I do feel safer. I know that they can be seen. Not only do I do the hand signals, but when you do the uh, turn signals, well, it just gives you that extra layer of safety. It is time for the brake test. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in the three different speeds that we have tested today. So we're gonna go all the way down to 12 miles an hour, see how quick we stop. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. 12 miles an hour, there it is, 10 feet. <laughs> I have a feeling it was gonna stop super quick. We just put it in the 20 mile an hour zone. So let's get it up to speed and test and see how it does with that. 22 feet. Okay, now let's go ahead and put it at 28. Class three speeds, lock it in. Ooh, she's a slow stopper at those speeds. 38 feet. Ooh, take a look, we're at 5% of battery. So that, uh, that brake test took a lot out of it, but I was pushing the bike really hard to get it up to those speeds in that short period of time. Yeah, so from here, we're gonna start heading home and we'll see how this bike operates at this low battery level. Everything on this bike works very simply. Like it, it all makes sense. You know, I wasn't too sure because I'd never used a controller like this before, but everything pops pretty natural. Now, I do have to tell you that with these gloves on, sometimes I do hit uh, like the turn signal button when I'm trying to hit the M button. So you just have to keep an eye on that. Luckily, the uh, turn signal uh, that pops up on the display is, you know, pretty, uh, pretty noticeable. This is another bike with a great battery management system. 2% battery power. We're working our way to the house. I'm just using throttle. We're just gonna milk the throttle the rest of the way. There is no pulsing. It, it just still feels like, you know, you could, it just, everything feels right with this bike. Holy cow. Now we're down to 1%. We're just gonna keep going here. Throttle only. 0% battery power and we're still cruising at like 20 miles an hour uh, 19 18 there it is low battery signal and i have lost assist to the bike all right so it says low battery hit m for okay oh ha, ha, ha. there it is now pulling up the app we're going to see if it tracked it any uh pause and then hold to stop doing that we're holding it we stopped it said we went 7.3 miles but if you remember we were at 29, so the, the mileage is less than what it shows on the display. Average speed, max speed, CO2 saved, calories burned, trip time. 
and it did show the route. It is now time for my final thoughts, and here's what I have to say about the Discover 2. Whatever bike I compare this against, I, I feel sorry for that other bike, and here's what I mean. I really don't have anything bad to say about any part of this bike. It breaks well. The gearing is super nice. You have all those different things with the settings. The display is great. The seat is great. The front rack comes in handy. I mean, what are you going to say bad about this bike? The distance? I mean, I think it did what it said it was going to do, considering that we were fighting a headwind along the way. Now, the display showed that we went 30.3 miles. Strava showed that we went 30.8. So because of that, I feel like the display is close enough that you wouldn't need a third-party app to uh, track your rides. The app seems to work okay for this, especially when it comes to the configurations on if you want to do it real easy with the configuration part. This whole setup here with all the changes and how you make them, I also found incredibly easy. You know what the only thing I didn't like? This. I do not like this mirror only because this kept moving around. So this just didn't stay where it needed to stay. Get the bike. I mean, 100% get the bike. It's $16.99. Just don't get the mirror. Just get your own mirror to go with it. Instead, I'm gonna get rid of this one right after this review. I don't think you can find a better commuter out on the road today. And because of that, I'm gonna leave my link down in the description below. If you are interested in it, go ahead and click that. That'll take you right to the Discover 2. Well, that's it, guys. That is my first review on the Velotrek Discover 2. There are a couple of other bikes that I want to put this up against to see how it does. So I want to thank you for watching. And until I see you again, enjoy the ride.